first subject that we want to cover this evening is chore training. Mm -hmm. And so we're just, like I mentioned, we're just going to walk kind of through what chore training looked like in our family, how yep. we kind of came to some of the convictions, you know, that we had on different tasks that our children did at different stages. Um, maybe kind of give a little like um, snapshot of what different tasks looked like at right. different ages. Yep. Um, and how we, maybe how we told or judged if a child was ready to move on to another set of chore training. Okay. Okay. So first off, why, why is it important for us to do chore training with our children? What are some of the benefits Ooh. that, that, that is a good question. I wasn't ready for the question. I was ready just to dive right in. I mean, but the why behind it mm -hmm, might mm -hmm. kind of help people really kind of... Right. Well, we definitely want our kids to learn how to do stuff. So that way yes. when they're out of the house, they can do, do stuff. stuff. Um, also, <laughs> the more things that, that a kid is good at, then then they have kind of that, that sense of accomplishment. Yes. They, they have <laughs> a sense that they are contributing to the family. Yeah. They are a meaningful, important part of the family unit. Team. Team. Yep. Family team. Family unit team. Family team. Yeah. I don't know. We could we could break. Work we'll have that to out. workshop it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we think we're hilarious. Not everyone does. <laughs> it's okay yep. if you don't. <clears throat> um. So yeah. So kind of the why behind that. Um. You know, and there's. So many reasons, potentially, like probably a handfuls that we haven't even mm -hmm. touched on this evening. Um, but it is really important to kind of sit down with your husband or wife and figure out, is chore training something that we feel is valuable enough or beneficial enough that we're going to invest the time that it requires to help our children um, you know, master skills at all of these different levels. Yeah. So. And by chore training, we're just talking about uh, teaching the kids and giving them jobs to do around the house. That That's really all. We, we termed it chore training, although somebody, a different family might call it something else, or you might read in some book somewhere that, oh, they have a different phrase for it. We just called it chore training in our family. Yeah. Um, again, feel free to use whatever cliche phrase you want. And, and it's going to be different for different families, too. For us, you know, when we really started this, we were living in the city. So there wasn't, like, jobs outside to do or, um, you know, uh, it, it was mostly inside stuff that we're talking about. You know, sometimes, you know, the, the farmers out here, they got to go home and do chores, you know, feed the cows and that type of stuff. So, um, you know, but, but when we started it, it was chores in the house. So is, is the way we started it out. And then when the kids got older and we moved to an acreage and we had animals and stuff, it, it, it did change depending on, on where we were at. Yes. So that's a really good point of clarification. So we, in our family, we have had chores, like Dave mentioned, that were inside the house that help with the functionality of the home. Mm-hmm. Um, and then once we moved to the farm and got animals, each of our children had a animal project that you, we could say. So like, for example, our oldest son, Isaiah raised honeybees. Our second oldest son raised meat rabbits. Emma, our oldest daughter, she raised chickens for a while. And then she transitioned also to a different breed of meat rabbits. Mm -hmm. Um, Jeb did goats. And Maggie took over the chickens when Emma mm -hmm. shifted. So those outside um, the home animal projects were a separate thing from the in the home chores that we had the children learn how to do. Um, so the way that we started our children, what's the first thing that we had our kids learn how to do when they were old enough to walk? Throw away their own diaper. That was their very first chore. So obviously this is what we had them. Oh, somebody's saying stuff. Can you read that? Oh, Eunice. 
Hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we had them when they were old enough to walk. The first thing that they did when we got done changing their diaper, they laying on the floor, or wherever, laying on the couch is we had we they stood up, you know, with their pants on and everything ready to go. And we said, here you go. Go take care of this. Mm -hmm. And they would walk up, walk into the kitchen or walk into wherever the toilet or the garbage can was. And they would put that away. Mm -hmm. When we did cloth diapers, they would go put that in the diaper bin. Yep. Okay. So whether you have cloth diapers or whether you have disposable diapers, it does not matter. You can still use this task. Now, obviously, if it's something you're going to have to rinse out and whatever, you're going <laughs> to deal with that a little differently, right? Yep. 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 Um, but if it's just... You know, number one, go put it in the diaper genie or whatever you receptacle you have mm -hmm. and move on. But that was step one chore training for our children. So when people come to us and they say, oh, my child's too young to learn chores. or No. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, if they can't, they're not mobile. They yeah. can't really do a whole lot. But as soon as they're old enough to learn, this is a mess that you created. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it's bodily functions so it's duh but it is part of their responsibility to help learn to take care of some of those things and this is a very um logical way for mm -hmm. them to learn how to care for yep things so yeah so putting uh you know and then it, when they get older they can be putting away the uh what is it that silverware silverware is a good good Sorting good second silverware. one and what's good with this too is that they're also starting to learn, you know, uh, this round one goes with the other round ones. The one with the, the four point, pointy thing, pointy things, they all go together. So they're also learning, you know, organization. They're learning uh, similar and different. So you're also teaching them all kinds of other stuff. Um, when it comes to uh, folding, uh, yeah. washcloths is, is what we started out with that. And, and here's the part too that you really need to watch out for as a parent is that when a kid, you know, when they're younger, they're at home with you right. um, or one of you. And, and if they're next to you and they look interested in what you're doing, get them involved. Find something small that they can do. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and that way, it, hey, I'm just hanging out with mom. I'm hanging out with dad. We're, we're doing adult type things. Yes. So it doesn't have to be a, you sit in the chair, Jimmy. We are learning right now. Mm -hmm. This is how you're going to do it. And until it's perfect, you're not moving from the chair. It doesn't have to be. Learning happens in life all of the time. So the more you mm -hmm. can involve your kids in whatever process you're doing, whether it's make, preparing food for the family, mm -hmm. obviously taking care of laundry for the family, you know, cleaning the house, any task your children can be involved in. And here's the thing, get them involved while they are young, mm -hmm. because when this is an ingrained um, process that they are part of, you do not have some of these stages where they come and they're like, oh, I'm not going to help with chores or I'm not going to do that, mm -hmm. you know, and then you have this fight on your hands. Mm -hmm. No. This is a process that you've been helping with this whole time because this is what it takes to run a home and run a family. Right. And when they get big enough, you know, they, they've, <laughs> they've, they've, they're good with the washcloths. They're good with the hand towels. Now, now they've graduated to full-size towels. And this is where it starts getting pretty tricky. And, and this is where we normally started getting some, some pushback from the kids. I don't, I don't like doing this. I don't want to do this. I can never, you know, because they're small. I mean, you're talking three years old. I mean, the towel is bigger than they are. So, I mean, for them, I mean, picture yourself trying to fold, uh, what, what is that called that you put on the bed? Bed spreads. Yeah. Right. Or, or, uh, bed sheets or whatever that to them, that that's what you're doing. They're doing. And, um, and so our kind of trick with that was when, when they had a bunch, you know, cause they would have, you know, eight, eight towels, eight, right. Give or take. And, I mean, the first couple of times they were all sloppy. It, 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 it didn't matter. They were all sloppy. So all we did is we picked the three worst ones. That's all we did. And just kind of pointed out, hey, here's some issues that you have here. Oh, if you would have put your hand like that and then d done this and hold it here and put your knee here and then, you know, whatever it might be. But, <laughs> but we never made them redo any more than three. And then as soon as they had that on point and they were, then, then it was ready. Okay. Now we're going to start working on some t-shirts. You, you can start doing your own t-shirts now. So, so here's all your t-shirts and, 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 and you can go from there. 
And one other thing in our household, the way that we have handled <clears throat> some of the laundry chores is we have gotten each member of the family a milk crate. Mm. So you have a milk crate and it says dad, mom, well, ours is together because we have the same bedroom area, but the kids each has their own milk crate. And so when it's time to fold your laundry, you go get your milk crate and you fold your laundry. We came down to the laundry room when our oldest was, how old do you think he was? I don't know what story you're telling, so I don't know. So he actually trained one of our younger children how to, was it fold or was it sort? I don't know. Sorry. Dave still doesn't know which story I'm telling. It was when we lived in the Tacoma house, the Hilltop house, and Isaiah was teaching, was it Jeb, how to, I think it was sort or fold or something. Here's what my point is for mentioning this story that Dave still doesn't know what I'm talking about. I don't think first, I was there. It's the first time this has ever happened, you guys. <laughs> Never <laughs> happened before now. Uh, <laughs> um, but he was training, teaching his younger brother how to complete the task. And so this is, again... It wasn't like, you know, it was even us doing that mm -hmm. training. He was coming alongside his younger brother and saying, this is how you, I think he was sorting because at the time he was the one that was in charge of sorting everyone's laundry. Yep. And so it's great to have those older siblings then mm -hmm. go on and teach younger yep. siblings. So. And, and, and our basic rule of thumb <laughs> is if they're like tall enough and strong enough to, to do a task then they can do it. Mm -hmm. So as soon as they're tall enough to, to look inside the, the washing machine, they can, they can put clothes into it. They, they can fill it up. They, you know, if they're, you know, get them a stool, they can, they can press the buttons, you know, you go through and you make sure and train them how to do all of that stuff. Same thing with uh, dishes. Sorry. Well, and you notice that Dave did not say if they want to do the task. Oh. So this is a competence. They are competent enough that they can be trained you know, they're capable, and so they can be trained to be competent in that task. Mm -hmm. um, and we don't jump right from like, okay, you mastered folding big towels. You know, they get comfortable with that, and then we're like bumping them right onto something oh, else. Oh, yeah, no. They stay at that specific chore for a season, mm -hmm. and then they move on. A couple of months, a couple of months. Yeah, minimum, and then they move on to you know, the next thing that we yeah. feel is necessary for them to learn. Yeah, because, I mean, we all remember being in school. As soon as you got good at one skill, the teacher, boom, moved on to another one. It's all like, wait a minute, I was just getting that last one, and I was actually getting to like it, and now you're moving on to a different topic, and now i got to go through the same rigmarole. Well, in this case, no. It's we actually want to get the kid to master said skill um, before moving them on to the next one. And and so whether it's vacuuming or mopping or uh, doing the dishwasher, either loading it or unloading it, um, th then they can move on to the next one. In fact, we had uh, w one of our kids did not like emptying the dishwasher and would take like 30, 40 minutes, even up to an hour to do this five minute task. <laughs> and so we told this individual, we said, we're not getting you off this until you have mastered it, which the kid already really had. They were just, they just didn't like doing it. Yeah. So you have to get it done in less than 10 minutes for five days in a row. And then we will get you to switch another job. So they got to where it's all boom, 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 boom. Oh, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. I'm all like, that's the type of excitement I was looking for. I mean, you're just doing the dishwasher. It's, it doesn't have to be a, a five-hour marathon here. Just get it done. And so after they had gotten to that point, it's all like, all right, now we need to switch jobs up. And we have five kids. And so um, so we do have each kid has their own um, little areas that they work in. We have one that washes dirty um, dirty clothes, another one that sorts clean clothes, and 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 so on like that. Now, one person puts the dishes in the dishwasher, the other one takes dishes out of the dishwasher. Um, so, you know, you if, if you have more kids, you, you can do that, um, where you break it up into those smaller chunks. Um, however, if you uh, don't have more kids, you probably have less to do. So... True. So that might be part of the issue, too, of why our kids don't like their, their job, because it does take longer than if you had a, a, a smaller household. 
Now, one thing that kind of jumped out to, at me as Dave was talking is, you know, how you are when you do a task, mm -hmm. your countenance, greatly impacts, you know, how positive, how much en you enjoy said task, all of those things. So this is a life lesson that transfers over from, you know, what you learn while you're doing chore training at home into, <clears throat> excuse me, into adult life. So we all have things that we don't like to do, mm -hmm. but how cheerful, joyful you are when you do that task, you can have a terrible task that you have to do and enjoy it because you just decided I'm going to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And so that is a uh, like major life lesson for your children when you say, you know what, we recognize that you're able to do this, but it's how you're doing it mm -hmm. that we need some work on. So we're going to go ahead and, you know, set these kind of parameters or guidelines mm -hmm. so that when we see that you're joyful, happy in a quick mm -hmm. manner, we can go ahead and yeah. find something else. And, it, and, and if your kid is, and, and, and again, these, these are things that work for us. You know, we, we have some kids that they're just, uh, they mope. Or you, you can tell that, that they're not really into uh, whatever they're doing by, by their facial expressions and their movement speed. Um, <laughs> if the kid's getting real frustrated, it's okay to jump in there and help them out. So just, just say, hey, uh, do you mind if I show you some tricks? Can I help you? And, and jump in there and just uh, and with a smile on your face and just say, yeah, I know. Every so often there's things that, that I have to do that I don't like doing anyhow. Um, but you know what? If, if you smile and maybe if you have a friend to do it with once in a while, it might make it a little bit easier. And so it, it's okay to jump in with your kid folding those hand towels or whatever and hum a song, tell a story, make it fun. Show them what it's like to do it with a joyful heart, uh, doing things as unto the Lord um, if you want to do that way. But yeah, it's totally fine to jump in there once in a while. Obviously, it's their job. But if they are struggling, uh, you know, one day a week, uh, if you make it a habit, then it's a habit. And then they haven't learned how to do it on their own because uh, they do have to manage, you know, because they do got to be able to manage their their emotions while they're doing this. Um, at some point in time, when when you're an adult, you, you know, there's things I don't want to do, but I'm still going to have to do it. And there's not going to always be somebody who loves me and wants what's best for me to to jump in there and give us a hand. Yes. Sorry. I was doing something else. Um, <laughs> so. I oh, sorry. Uh, on our, no, on our <laughs> note card, it was your turn. We, we don't have a note card. Oh, you guys, there's no note card. There's no note card. Hat. <laughs> I'm, I'm um, just trying to put her on the spot and it worked. Yeah. There was something that I was going to say about what you I said. I knew it. Anyways, it's, it's gone for now. Tune in next week. <laughs> It'll come back probably when I'm halfway through a sentence and... Oh, I remembered. Um, no, but yes, there are definitely children who... Oh, it's back. <laughs> um, so what Dave was saying about, you know, there's different things that you can do. And of course, coming alongside your children, of course. Um, one thing that is motivating to some of our kids and not others is you can set a timer. And you can like have them oh. race, like beat the clock type mm -hmm. situation. We have some um, very competitive kids. We do have some very competitive kids. And other kids, it doesn't matter what you say. They're not going fast. They have one speed. Well, they have two speeds. Video games are in 20 minutes <laughs> or video games aren't today. Those are their two speeds. Right. Um, and so obviously there, there are motivators. It's just a matter of figuring out what your child's mm -hmm. motivation is. Um, and the other one is... When we have cleaning or sorting or different things that we're doing, a big task, all of us together or most, the kids and I together, I like to just say we're going to have a cleaning party, a sorting party. Mm -hmm. It's all a party. Yeah. Um, and so we like to put on Christian music, uplifting music, edifying music, kind of jazzy so that you kind of keep get some mm -hmm. pep in your step. Um, because if you dance while you're cleaning, it feels like you're dancing and not cleaning. <laughs> I've learned this. Um, but for not all of our kids, it doesn't always look like dancing. Yeah. <laughs> um, so anyways, so there are things, it's really just a matter of finding out 
the mm. motivator or something encouraging or exciting for your children and then putting those into practice yeah. at different times. And and don't forget, it, it's okay to treat kids differently because they are different. Um, equal and fair are not the same thing. We want it to be fair. It doesn't have to be equal. So, so just because one kid gets a, a candy bar when they're done with their whatever you whatever you put out there doesn't mean the next kid has to have one either so it's it can be different and and that's totally fine uh some kids they need more encouragement um th than other kids so you know you, you just got to deal with that there's you know there were uh anyhow that's yes if the kid is all like well he didn't or she didn't or with that kid you so it's a different kid it, it, it's okay. I'm I'm the parent. You're a kid. You, when you have kids, that then we can talk about how unfair this is. Um, but for now, um, this is the way I, you are, and this is the way I'm going to respond to that. So, yes. and if you choose to respond that way, well, then here's my response. If you respond this way, then you have this response. Um, for your brother or sister, it was different. Right, and saying like. I'm the parent, you're the child, isn't saying we are perfect nope. by any means. Mm -hmm. Have we done everything right? No. Um, and so having those real conversations with your children, like, hey, we, you know, I said, I realized we started out this way, that, you know, mm -hmm. after we talked, dad and I talked, all that kind of stuff, we realized that wasn't the best course of action. Mm -hmm. We're going to adjust and do this next time or whatever. Um, please accept my apology, those types of things. Mm -hmm. um, but also, you know, following through with what you set up, of course, because we are the parent, they are the children. This is the hierarchy of authority that the Lord set in place mm -hmm. in this home. And so this is the hierarchy that is going to be followed. Yeah. You have to remember <laughs> that those kids are special. They're great. Every kid is special. Every kid is great. God loves every single kid. And he chose you. Yes. To be the parent. You. He didn't choose somebody else. He wanted you to do it because he knew you had a certain way of looking at things that were going to get the exact result that God wanted for that kid. Yes. And he didn't choose your mom or your mother-in-law or your dad <laughs> or your father-in-law. I am I love right. my mom and my mother-in-law and my dad and my father-in-law. I'm just reminding you, watchers, that he didn't choose those people to raise your children. Um, and so going to them for counsel is great. Oh, yep. um, how you choose to accept counsel from others that wasn't requested is another thing. Mm, mm. Not that we've gotten any of that from any of those individuals I mentioned, but it's probably going to come from somebody, maybe even somebody on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow, stay strong. And, and the other thing too is make sure and have time to talk with your with your husband or wife yes. about, okay, so what's the next chore? What's the next thing now? Oh, you know, she would notice, oh, this kid is now starting to display this behavior. Give me some ideas. Let's let's workshop this and figure out how we can how we can cut this off. Um, because this, if this turns into a habit, it, it's going to be a big mess and we're going to have to backtrack a long way in order to make up this lost ground. Um, and, and have those expectations as equal as possible between the both of you. Um, so that way, you know, if a dad comes walking in and he sees something and, you know, it, he would respond similarly to the way mom would. Um, so, and again, we're talking about chore training. I know there's, there's lots of other things on there. If you guys have other stuff that, that you want to hear our thoughts on, um, there's, you know, comments, whether it's on, on the, uh, the Facebook or, or the YouTube, um, go ahead and drop those, uh, drop those in and, and we can cover some of those as, as it, as it comes up. So, um, also if there's anything else you want to hear us talk about, uh, make sure and, and drop those in some comments or reach out and message and all that type of stuff. Did you have a special Yes, episode? yes, we did. We we a actually we we actually had a uh, had somebody <laughs> request something special. They wanted shaving tips. So um so it's it's been it's been a day or so. Oh, I gotta make sure I'm on both cameras. Yeah, so I, I haven't shaved yet. So uh so my my tool is 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 this guy here that I use. Now I I would love to get it's called a bald eagle and it's got it's got five of these bad boys on it. So you can get five 
well, you can get what five thirds more cutting done in the same amount of time. Um, but but this is a guy I use. Five um, thirds. I'm not a math expert, isn't it? Five fifths. <clears throat> it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> five thirds as much. It's more. Oh oh oh. Time and a half. Okay. I get it. Yeah, that's okay. I was doing it in my head quickly, so sorry. Um, somebody check my math on there. Um, 12 equals zero once in a while and seven plus eight equals three. Anyhow, um, so yeah, so this is what I use. Um, one of these guys here right now, cause I have my winter face on, I only got to hit the top and then the neck. Um, and then, and then right in here, in this area here, sometimes I get some stragglers that come out. I don't like shaving those because when they come back in, people can kind of notice. So it's, it's the tweezers. Um, come on in, make sure you get a nice, nice line in there. I just leave my natural line and then just any of the stragglers I do. Cause I know sometimes, you know, guys like to have, you know, more of a chin Chris. strap. So, yeah. So anyhow, so that's, and, and remember, you know, if, if you are having, having crazy old man eye, eyebrows, sometimes those. You need to need to need to come in there and pluck them out. So anyhow, it was shaving tips. This is, this is a guy I use again, Bald Eagle or something along those lines is is kind of on my wish list. So I think they're a little bit pricey. I got this for you know, it was on the clearance rack at Wally World or whatever for like twenty bucks. I'm all like, all right, because my old one was old, and so it was taking you know twenty minutes to do a five minute job. So mm. anyhow. Uh, so that that's that's the shaving tips. I, I hope Jesse, I hope that that covered um, what you was hoping for. And uh, and and if I can be of any more help, please please feel free to reach out. I know you got a good looking dome too, though, my man. Now your wife may not be a hundred percent on board when you decide to take the plunge. Oh, going um, yeah. But it's okay. Yeah, yeah, it it is good. Cause she'll just, you'll just come downstairs with your hood on and then you just go like that and she'll be like, ah! Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah. It, it was a fun time. Yeah. We were in between two episodes. We were doing some binge watching and I just walked upstairs and zzz, you know, and then came downstairs with a hood up and then let her sit next to me and then took it off. And all of a sudden she just catches me out of the side of her eyes in her peripherals. Oh, what did you do? I had to sit like this for Babe, a while. Babe, we've been talking about this for a couple of years. I know you keep saying no, but I decided, hey, you know, Rona's going around. You never know. It was. It was during those it six weeks of, her, or the, well, the, the two years of two weeks. Shut down. Yep, yep. Anyhow. All right. Are we good? Did we, did we get We're everything good. done I with our notes? Let's check. Yep, 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 yep. This is a fake notebook. What does it even say on it? All right. Anyhow. <laughs> Bye. You don't want to say toodles? Toodles. Oh, I do want to. That's my new thing. Toodles.